Hello and welcome back to Jack Knives Reviews. I'm of course your host, Jack Knives. Today I will be reviewing The Whale. Charlie is a severely obese and reclusive English teacher, binge eating and having depressive fits for years over his own past mistakes. He lives alone with occasional visits from his nurse slash best friend, Liz. He tries to reconnect with his estranged daughter, Ellie, as well as a developing and blooming friendship with a visiting missionary named Thomas. With the fear of his own impending death, he tries everything in his power to try to resolve his past before his life comes to an end. This is one of the hardest, realest, rawest films I've ever really seen. It hit on a lot of aspects that I personally deal with. Well, first off, you need to go into this with a very open mind and understand that you are in for a very, very depressing story. Everything you've heard about Brendan Fraser's performance is true. If he doesn't win an Oscar or at least get an Oscar nomination, it will be a travesty to acting. He was just so heart-wrenching. It was a movie that just hit on so much real, raw emotion. Darren Aronofsky adapted and directed this movie, and for those of you that may know of his work, he made West Wing, and so many other projects that have won multiple awards. And one thing that Darren Aronofsky is fantastic at is dialogue is drawing you into the emotional dialogue of character interaction and he plays it beautifully in this film. Seeing Brendan Fraser essentially killing himself with food, seeing binge eating, seeing aspects of just this self-destruction, it resonated with me as a person who struggles with certain things like that. It just it's so raw. I know that this was based on a play, and I have seen aspects of the play online, I've seen things about the play, and I've read so many things. When this first appeared at Cannes and several other film festivals, it literally got a standing ovation just for Brendan Fraser's performance, and it is well deserved of that standing ovation. But along with him, there are a pretty damn good cast, and the script itself is rife with emotion, regret, and feelings of just how to come about the crux of your life and think about it in a way that isn't, you know, heavy-handed, but it's not light-handed either. It feels like a good balance of both. Very much like The Banshees of Inishirin, which I talked about before, this is a self-reflective movie. This is a movie where you look at yourself and think, are you gonna let your past mistakes define who you are in the present? Are you going to look at yourself and think, it's all my fault, everything is my fault? And yes, we all make mistakes, yes. And yes, we do unintentionally or intentionally have an effect on people around us, especially those that we care about. And this movie plays on that in a not subtle way. The relationship he has with his nurse, which he refers to as his best friend. The fact that he's a teacher who uses online Zoom things, but never shows his face because of his own hatred for his face and what he's become. That he's turned into, well, a whale of a person. That he's so obese that he can't even get really any movement anymore. He could barely work and he knows that his life is coming to an end because of his weight that he's caused. He is killing himself slowly by his own hand. And on top of that, this relationship of his past that he's trying to rekindle with his daughter seems very, very fleeting. 
I will say the major problem I have with this film, it's specifically the character that Sadie Sink plays, his daughter. She is like... Horrible. She is a horrible person. Like, not... Not horrible in a realistic way. Like, horrible in a way that's like... Almost like cynically evil. There are parts in this movie where I'm like... I don't think anyone would have that kind of reaction. I really don't. Like, there are things where, like, she'll do some messed up stuff, especially one particularly effed up thing. And the characters, not just the main character, because it's like, okay, well, you could kind of justify it because, you know, it's her dad. But the other characters are like, oh, that's silly. I'm like, no, no, this is a this is horrible. What's wrong with you people? What's so weird is it wouldn't bug me so much if this movie wasn't playing it so seriously. There's even a Christian missionary who's kind of like trying to figure out like, oh, maybe I'm not spiritual. Maybe I'm not religious. Maybe I'm trying to figure out who I am. And it's meant to look inward in order to relate to the characters. And some may see that as playing on your emotions and manipulating the audience. But I don't really see it that way. With this sort of movie, this is a longly anticipated film for me. I don't regret seeing it, but I also really, I don't know. It, it left me kind of thinking about everything, like about myself, about my own personal struggles and things like that. So if you don't wanna see a really depressing movie, you don't have to go see it. But I do recommend people to watch it because it is in tune with the struggles of inner peace, basically. I give The Whale four and a half out of five. Have you seen The Whale? Not a whale. The Whale. Let me know in the comments down below. As always, I'll see you next time.